Hello to the readers of ESCExtra.com. We're here today with Ralph Eiland, who, as I'm sure you all remember, won the Latvian National Final last weekend as part of Beatbox Plus duo Pair. Ralph, thanks for speaking to us today. You're welcome. Hey, everything is a okay. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Now, uh, first of all, congratulations. You finally won the Latvian National Final. Finally, finally we did it. I mean, uh, it's it's been a long time, four years. This this was the fourth year uh, that we participated in Eurovision, and it couldn't be better because we really we're really looking forward to getting uh, to Sweden because it's a uh, it's a big city for producers, for our music lovers. You know, uh, producers of Lady Gaga are from Sweden, yep. and songwriters of uh, the songs which uh, Madonna uses are from Sweden. And it's, a, it's a big musical country, you know. So um, I guess uh, just uh, going on from that, are you planning to, I guess, make some contacts while you're there, not just be there for the Eurovision Festival? Of course, of course. That's uh, one of the main reasons. And we stated here in Latvia that uh, we have to send uh, bands which have something to present to, to the European crowd, you know. Uh, we, we have our program, we have our songs. It's not just this one song, here we go. We are yep. already ready. We are like uh, working for five years now. And we think that we are ready to just blow in Europe. So that's, that's why we think that uh, it's the right choice that Latvians voted us into the Eurovision finals, and that's where we are really happy, really, really, really glad. Excellent. Uh, we'll, we'll come back to some of the stuff you just touched on there. Yeah. But uh, taking yourself back to last Saturday, after you made it into the super final, as the televoting came so, so close between you and Samantha, yeah. how did you feel? It was, it was quite shocking, you know, because uh, uh, we didn't think that we uh, were going to win. Yep. And uh, each year, uh, some famous Latvian musicians, uh, uh, each and every year, they told us, like, uh, you're the best, you're the bomb, you're, you're going to win. Especially last year when we participated with Disco Superfly. And yep. uh, we just lost. We, we didn't win. So we thought that the same uh, thing is going to happen this year, but it was a shocker that we won. So we felt really, really stressful at the super finals yeah. but when we sang the song you know uh, when you sing on a stage uh, everything just goes away but when you wait the results and don't sing it, it, that, that's the hardest part for me yeah i think the thing i personally liked most about your performance is how much fun you looked like you were having and the fact that you engaged the audience much more than any other act did of course, we think that uh, this is what Eurovision needs, uh, a, fe a feeling like you're in, in a festival, in a concert, in a show, not on television recording, uh, yep. like you're on a live, live festival with your favorite band on stage. Having a look at the voting, the full results were announced earlier this week, and there's uh, some strange sort of patterns. In the first semi-final, Sad Trumpet came second, and Here We Go came third in the second semi-final. Yeah. Uh, while in the final, Sad Trumpet was actually last in the televoting, while Here We Go was first. Yeah. Um, did you put any sort of message out there to your fans to of vote course. for Here We Go? A huge message. A huge message. It shocked the whole Latvian Eurovision crowd. Um, we stated that... Um, we think that Latvia should be presented by musicians which are mm -hmm. singing Latvian author song, not some yep. Swedish author song or some other author song from other country. And yep. we told the crowd that we have two songs in the final which are written by Latvians, by us, Here We Go and Sad Trumpet. So uh, we stated that Okay, let's send Latvian writer song, let's send our song, and let's send Here We Go, because Here We Go can really pump up the crowd. Yeah. And yeah, the peeps, they, they agreed. They thought that it was pretty reasonable that we, that we can, can actually have a good place in the finals with Here We Go instead of Sad Trumpet. Yeah. Uh, cool. Now, um, we've always spoken to you when we've uh, interviewed you, but how does Edmund feel about all of this? Yeah, he's really happy. He's really glad. And 
and uh, he felt shocked for like the whole the whole week. <laughs> Everyone did, yeah. And right now we're just working on everything, so yep. he felt happy. Uh, and you mentioned uh, feeling shocked for the week. What have you been up to in the like six days since you won? Six days. Uh, I, I I caught a virus. And I was sleeping home. I was sick. I was. I was. It was really bad. <laughs> I oh, wanted. Dear. I wanted to enjoy, you know, the, the the freedom after Eurovision by going to the movies, by by meeting with friends and doing other stuff. But I was just staying home, and I was watching movies. And even that that after like two days seemed kind of irritating for me. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I haven't done a lot of things. This is the first day when I started doing my interviews because uh, a lot of the interviews are in my email. Today I'm yep. meeting a lot of Latvian magazines and doing interviews with them. Ah, excellent. Well, we thank you for making some time for us. <laughs> yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> um, now, when we uh, spoke to you just before the uh, national selection, uh, you made your final comment was, don't think in the category, is this suitable for Eurovision? Think in the category, is this good music? Uh, would you like to elaborate a little bit in what you mean by that? Yeah, Go of course. It. There's a reason because uh, there is this time in the year when Eurovision comes to almost every European country. And when Eurovision comes, the writers, what do they do? They see, oh, we can send our song to Eurovision. So they start to make a song like two weeks before the deadline. They make their song, they send the song to Eurovision and almost every song sounds the same. Yep. Like your Eurovision standard and and that also makes the people think in a different category. They start thinking, yep. yeah, I like this song but I won't go for this song because it's not kind of su suitable for Eurovision. I think that we need something big, something huge, uh, clowns on stage and fireworks <laughs> and and uh, a verse, chorus, verse, chorus, uh, chorus one more time, a formula for Eurovision because it will sh it will be shocking, it will be good for Europe, and yep. they uh, they all of a sudden forget about their fa favorite bands like Led Zeppelin, like Eminem, like uh, John Mayer or any other artist. There's this one time in the year when people just lose every criteria that they have about music and start thinking in this one criteria which is called Eurovision Standard. And yep. we think that it's completely wrong. There is not such a Eurovision Standard. If there is, well, well it's, not, it's not so good. Because yep. uh, why should there be a standard which is living only once a year, only once a year, on Eurovision? Every other time that you buy a ticket to Eminem show, to Lady Gaga show, you don't hear typical Eurovision songs. You don't see yep. typical Eurovision shows. So that's why we suggested this year to our Latvian fans, and I, as I already stated in your inter interview, uh, yep. that don't think in the category is it suitable for Eurovision think in the category is it good music so just for artists write songs which you will write all all year long you know each and every day and for yep. voters vote for the music which you like which you love not for the music which you think that is good for Eurovision because there is yep. no such thing uh, you also mentioned that you were in the jury last year and that you yeah. voted for Lorraine do you think that was a good example of a non-typical Eurovision song? That was a great example. A great example. That was an amazing song. Uh, when I heard the song first time, when I was in the jury, oh, I loved it. It, it was really, it was really, it standed out from the other songs. And on stage, I could see in her eyes that she really loved that song. It wasn't mm -hmm. a song that was written for her for like, you have a good voice, I have a good song, let's do a collaboration and represent yeah. Sweden in the Eurovision. No, 
that was that was true. That was music. That was art. That's why I gave twelve points um, to Sweden. And yeah, that that is a good example. And I hope that this year there will be a lot more songs uh, made in the way that Euphoria was made. Just music, which artists like. Now, I guess getting back to your preparations, what happens now? What do you have planned between now and in Malmo? Yeah, we have we have um, a lot of rehearsals. Yeah, a lot of rehearsals. This this Sunday we start on uh, start doing our start working on our moves on stage. Mm -hmm. um, a dancer from from Sweden is going to help us. I still cool. have haven't met her, and I don't know her name, but I will meet her <laughs> at Sunday. And she cool. already told that uh, uh, she loves the freedom on the stage that we have, and uh, it will stay almost the same. Yep. There are just some couple of things that we need to work on, and that 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 that's that that's really good news for me because I love freedom on stage. I'm not a good dancer when it's like four or four four people dancing the same moves i i don't like that i don't enjoy that when i go to red hot chili pepper show they aren't aren't dancing when i go to kings of leon they aren't dancing on stage i just like to feel free and give it the positive energy to the crowd and receive it back yeah so the dance moves they start on sunday and um we're singing every day almost every day at least i am at home singing the chorus and we probably will have uh, more singers on stage at the finals so yep. the chorus will be a lot stronger cool well in a less positive light uh, Latvia has failed to qualify for the last four times and uh, came last twice out of that what are your expectations out of Eurovision uh... We really don't expect anything because, you know, yep. um, there are <laughs> this one thing that is every year, political yep. voting. Yep. And that is a huge problem and you just have to face it that Russians will vote for Russians and Latvians will vote for Latvians. And that's why we, we are receiving every year some points from Ireland because there are a lot of Latvians in Ireland. Yep. <laughs> and stuff like that will happen. And it's just pretty obvious. And yeah, the poli pol political voting, that is the biggest problem. And we'll just have to find a way not to think about that and have as much fun as we can on a stage. So that's it. No expectations. Cool. The only thing we have to do in Eurovision is get contacts and represent Latvia. Uh, in the best way that we can. Just sing good, move good, so that everyone in Latvia here could be proud of us. Lovely. Well, um, we've already asked you for a message last time we spoke to you, but do you have anything else you'd like to say to our uh, readers and listeners? Yeah, they got to understand what do they love about Eurovision. Understand the pros and cons and understand what Eurovision has become. Do they want to vote about a um, parody song which just laughs about Eurovision, or do they want to vote about music that they really like, which they really like? So I'm going to just say once more, um, don't think in the category, uh, is this suitable for Eurovision? Think in the category, is this good music, and do I love it? So that that's just it. Just just remember what kind of shows have you seen this year? What kind of tickets have you bought? To what kind of concerts? And you'll get your musical taste and well for the best there is, well for um, the artist that is suitable to your musical taste. That's it. Fantastic. Well, uh, on behalf of all our readers and listeners and the uh, editorial team, I'd like to say thank you very much for your time today, Ralph, and congratulations once more. We're, we will see you in Malmö. Yes.